just makes one, in fact, for the visit of Bristol City. Joby McEnough back after four games out with a thigh problem. Stephen Cabber drops out. Joint top scorers Marlon King and Darius Henderson looking to get back in business after drawing uncharacteristic blanks in the last couple of games. Not much to smile about recently, but a few positives for Bristol City after their point at Hull this week. And this is the same side for them, with one exception. Jamie McAllister sent off at the KC Stadium is banned, so Jamie McComb comes in to add a little bit of height to the defence. Liam Fontaine switches to left back. Enoch Shuwemni hadn't started for the first team since August before this week, but the former Luton Town man keeps his place, supported by David Noble playing that link role. Watford decide to go without a goalkeeper on their bench. Both managers, though, with the luxury of million-pound men. 3.25 million-pound signing Nathan Ellington can't get a, a place in the starting lineup, just like one million-pound man Lee Trundle. So both sides looking to kickstart their form. Bristol City coming to Watford. Let's get a word with their manager, Gary Johnson. He's down with Rob. Gar Gary, thanks very much for joining us. I know you've got a lot of respect for Watford. Is this the best time or the worst time to face them? We won't know yet, will we? Um, it could be either. But uh, we just got to compete with Watford's game and make sure that we play our own game. And that's very important here. And if we play our own game, then maybe we can disappoint them even more. But we respect the opposition. The draw against Hull, you played well in that, but still no goals. How worried are you about the lack of goals? Well, um, the longer it goes, the more worried you get. But you just have to persevere. We work very hard in training. The boys are trusting their training, we hope, at the moment. And uh, we just need a lucky one to go in for us. How glad are you November's out of the way now? Look forward to December. Yeah, that's always nice to go into a new month, but we're still there or thereabouts challenging. And this will show us how far we've come again. OK, Gary, thanks very much for joining us. Cheers, Rob. Well, they probably did. West Bromwich Albion being held down at Selhurst Park. It's a big boost for Watford. And they've started like they mean business. Good steal by Darius Henderson. Looking immediately for Marlon King, wearing the gloves. A real rare show of uh, public annoyance by Adrian Boothroyd after the defeat here against Burnley. Usually does things behind closed doors, but his players will be coming out there. His manager was after when he uh, made that uh, rather rash bet, as probably feels now. Here's Shawomley trying to run in behind, cut out by Jordan Stewart for Watford. Lewis Carey, the most experienced player in this Bristol City side, looking for movement in front of him. This is the fleet-footed Ivan Sprawl, and he's won Bristol City's first corner. It's good play down the right hand side, and slowly but surely, Bristol City just getting one or two passes together. That'll build the confidence for them. He's one to watch, Ivan Sprawl. Very, very impressed with him last time I saw him. Mackendo will take the corner. Set pieces so often. Watford's strength. Can Bristol City undo their host here? Very nearly. It was a good chance. Marvin Elliott coming in at the far post. That's great defending in the end. Really good defending. Marvin Elliott's eyes must have lit up here. I think it's Jordan Stewart, isn't it? Just gets there ahead of him. It's terrific defending. Take two for McIndoe and Bristol City. Right back into the mix. Poom able to come through a real crowd of players to get there. Fontaine will have another go. Normal service resume, not able to add to his one career goal. Fontaine. Don't have to fill in at the left back role recently uh, against Leicester in the home defeat. And this is a real chance. Ivan Sproul is in behind. Terrific save by Mark Poon. Bristol City thought that they had done enough to take the lead. Bradley Orr has taken it away, and it might still be on here for Bristol. This is good moment in by Lee Johnson, chased by McIndoe. And the reward for all that pressure is a corner. Well, it's vital, vital save, but it's Marvin Elliott here, does the donkey work, and then slide rule pass for Sprawl. We know he's got the pace, and really, it's a super, super save. You just feel, really, perhaps he could have lifted this ball up and over Mark Poom, but it's a good save. 
Stewart looks up towards Henderson. McCombs touch, it's fallen to Marlon King. That can spell danger, not this time though. McEnough, not the most convincing of clearances by Basso. Here is McEnough, well, to run a long way and get his shot away. Not surprising to see Lewis Carey really have a go at his keeper there, because it all came from that. Well, it did, it was a terrible, terrible clearance. In the end, he gets lucky. It's just the, the defending from Watford, you feel this get chances. This is well worked, Henderson has picked out King. Marlon King! Oh, it's back off the post, McEnough! Saved by Basso, and again, and they've cleared it away. Right on cue. They said they'd get chances. And Bristol City have had their time, their chances. Haven't uh, been able to score, but as we... Well, I'm king. Now Smith. Just needed a touch in there to make it a little interesting for Watford. Here's Jordan Stewart now. No time for anything too significant to happen at the end here, but it's a first half where the goalkeepers have had the most significant say. Mark Poom with important action in the Watford goal mouth, and likewise at the other end, Adriano Basso keeping Watford at bay. A goalless half-time scoreline. Positives for both managers to take at half-time, enough to ensure that they feel the same 11 as we kick off this second half here. Here's Trumbull. And he's certainly something, someone rather who can make something out of nothing. Fontaine into the right area for Shawani! The former Luton Town man puts Watford behind and Bristol City end their goal drought. Well, I don't know what was written on that paper, but scrap that now, Nathan. Again, there's another fall by a Watford defender, it's Tommy Smith, but this is a fantastic ball to the far post. Shawomni breaks free from his marker, decent movement, hits the target, heads the ball down, and really, you have to say, where is the Watford defence? Nowhere to be seen, and, well, he can't believe his luck, can he? Really, you have to say it's come at a time where potentially Watford had been the more threatening. Demerit. Good header down by Ellington. McEnough has steered it wide. That's good last ditch defending, isn't it? In the end, it skews. Basso clawed off the head in by Demerit and the Watford at the equaliser. John Joe O'Toole in the nick of time. It is 1-1. Wow, oh, what a story it is for the young man. And can we believe it? Of course we can. A Watford set piece. Bristol switch off. They take it quickly. It goes in. The goalkeeper, who's had a good game, makes a hash of it. That's a good header by Demerit. And O'Neill, O'Toole in the right place at the right time. He was never going to miss from there. Bad fist, bad punch, good header there first, better second header. And what a story that is for young John Joe O'Toole. The goal scorer is taken off. We've already seen one substitution pay dividends for the men in yellow. The uh, same for Gary Johnston. The first touch from Byfield. Scoose couldn't keep it in. And not as he would have wanted to. Well, he had the scent of victory in his nostrils. It's been taken away. It could yet get worse.
O'Toole. McComb. And O'Toole. Ellington. McEnough starts. King couldn't get there. The long leg of Jamie McComb did the defensive work for Bristol City. It's McEnough to do the attacking. The helping hand from Trundle. They've got men forward here, Bristol City. Trundle, great ball in. And good piece of goalkeeping by Poom. It's come to Cole Scoos. Dug out again, and Byfield! Would you believe it? Darren Byfield off the bench to win it for Bristol City. Well, you can't believe it. You really can't believe it, because let's not kid ourselves. Darren Byfield was brought on the field of play by Gary Johnson to run the clock down and get the point. But what a twist this is. Football throws these up, but Scoos does really well, pulls the ball back. Look, there's the intelligent position that Byfield takes up. He reacts to what happens, look. He pulls away from the ball, and as it's cut back, there's the finish of a player who's been around a bit into the ground and up into the net. What a substitution. No wonder he's delighted. Darren Byfield, 300th career league appearance. His fifth goal for Bristol City since his move for Millwall. And that one will taste the sweetest, I'm sure. Well, it will be a first Bristol City win for 14 years over Watford. It will be Bristol City who go up into the top five, and it will be Watford who continue their barren run. Just one win in their last six games now. Unless there's yet another twist. It's well over the time, the referee, isn't he? Great jump by Danny Shittu. Marlon King! Well, that was the chance. That was the chance for Watford. It will not be their day. Well, again, another high ball into the box. They don't deal with it. It's a big jump by Shittu at the far post. Just wouldn't come down quick enough for him. And in the end, it's an awkward volley. And it's a high, wide and handsome volley. Into the sixth minute of added time. There can't be much to go now. Gary Johnson asked the fourth official what's going on. And Bristol City have a famous win. They've come to the championship leaders who remain on top of the table, but they have taken all three points. Darren Byfield off the bench to win it for Bristol City in sensational style after it looked like the substitute for Watford had done them a favour. John Joe O'Toole's first ever senior goal, getting them right back into the mix. You might have thought Watford more likely then, but it is to be Bristol City's day. They've come to Watford and won by two goals to one. Darren, how important a victory is that for your team? Uh, very, it was very, very important. Um, we haven't played as bad as the results were shown the last few games. Um, we need a little bit of luck, and uh, today we got it. Were you sent on to waste a bit of time with the substitution or to go and win the game? <laughs> I ask that with the greatest of respect. No, to win the game, um, to be honest, I thought it, once it, the chance came over that I just made good contact and it'd go in. The gaffer said, make yourself a hero on the foot. Well, in two minutes, but it was nice to see it go in. Sits the bar high, you've done that. You know, what, what about you as a former Luton man to come and score here? How special was it and how much stick did you get from the fans tonight? Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, Obviously played here for Luton as well, so it was, um, it was extra sweet tonight, yeah. Um, and what were you thinking when they scored at 1-1, all your hard work was undone, I guess? Yeah, we thought um, we can get in the game. I think my leg's just gone in the last two minutes and Daz has come on and scored a great goal to win us the game. What did it do for confidence? Oh, it was brilliant. We um, haven't been on the best of runs, haven't scored that many goals, but it's great for two strikers to get a goal tonight. Well done, guys. Go and enjoy. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Gary, did you deserve to win that one? Well, I think so. Um, you know, we certainly was going for it at the end, put on two strikers. Um, I said to Darren, just as he went on, that he'll get one chance, be ready for it. And um, it was great that he, he took his goal and uh, we won the game because I felt we played some good stuff first half. We had three or four good chances. Um, even though the Watford fans were probably a bit disappointed, it was still a great game. You know, It was two sort of differing styles, really, and we had to compete with them and play our game. It was your 50th league win as, as the manager of this football club, but more importantly, what does it do for the confidence after the run the players have been on? Well, we, we, we haven't been on that bad a run. We've had one or two dopey games, to be honest. Um, but the, the game at Hull, we were down to 10 minutes second half. We really felt we played well that game. And uh, we've gone into this game a bit more confident. And I think you could see that today, and I'm very proud of all of them. 
And just very briefly, five points off the leaders now. Um, that's a huge boost. You're on a run. It's a massive boost, and you know to beat Watford on their own territory is a, is a massive confidence boost, and uh, it's what the lads have deserved on the day. Well done. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much.